So just after celebrating St. Patrick's Day, and we were there in the cathedral, and Cardinal really came back from the conclave. So it was great to have him back, and the people of Armagh really enjoyed having the Cardinal back to celebrate St. Patrick's Day here in Armagh. But while he was here, uh, we couldn't miss the opportunity to ask him about the conclave, all that went on with electing a new Pope. So there, Father Rory was in uh, Araceli, and he interviewed the Cardinal about the conclave. So Father Rory, what went on? Well, it was very humbling to hear Cardinal Brady speak as one of the Cardinal electors uh, to elect Pope Francis and the occasion, uh, the unique occasion it was in the history of the church and Cardinal shared his own experience and revealed his own uh, very happy memories of the conclave and during the interview showed what uh, takes place and what it was like as soon as uh, Cardinal Bergoglio reached the magic 77 and however he burst out in applause oh. and it was a very uh, Moving moment, and I hope everyone enjoys looking at the interview. Think we should watch it right now? Well, I have here before me the, the programme of the Conclave of 2013. At 1545, we left the Dome of St. Martha by uh, minibus to transfer to the Apostolic Palace. 1640, we had a procession from the Capella Paulina uh, in choral dress chanting uh, the Litany of the Saints and the Veni Sancti Spiritus. 1645, everybody took their place and proceeded to the juramento, the swearing of the oath. At the end, everybody came out and each one came out one by one, stood in front of the Gospel in the middle of the Sistine and swore the, the oath. And then there was a meditation introduced by Cardinal Prosper Greg in Augustinian and we proceeded to the first scrutiny, well, we proceeded to the drawing by a lot of the six scrutineers, the three scrutineers and three revisers. I was one of the three revisers, so we sat at the top table. Proceeded through the first vote, which uh, resulted in black smoke. Then the this votes were burned in the stove, and then we had Vespers in the and back to, at 7.30, back to the Dome of Sancti Marte. Now in the interval, when the vote was going off, you could have this for, uh, there's a, a lovely introduction to the Sistine Chapel, as you see the glass judgment up there. And over here, uh, we had the giving of the, the giving of the uh, Ten Commandments to Moses is featured there, but also the Sermon on the Mount. And I was, pleasantly surprised afterwards to find that when Carolyn Bogolio was elected Pope, in fact he had said at some stage that the following Christ is fairly simple if you remember to keep the Ten Commandments and to keep in mind the Sermon on the Mount. That's the four rows of seats down each side there. You uh, a voting paper Eli go in summum multifugem and you write a name in there, fold it Hand it up, hold it up like that, proceed up to the altar where we say testify. Let's see, see someone. There's the Saint Patrick was in the, the, the litany of the saints, and you might find this. At the altar, the, you know, before placing the vote in the chalice. I test, I call Christ as my witness, who will be my judge, that my vote has been given to whom, to him whom, accordance with God, I believe to be worthy of election. Then I proceed to uh, count them, and if there's a, no result, proceed to burn them. I don't know whether there's a result or not, they burn them anyway. And that was, that was the first evening. Six, next day, Wednesday, breakfast began at 6.30 to 7.30, which is 5.30 to 6.30 in Ireland. 7.45, the transfer to the Apostolic Palace. 8.15, Mass again in the Capella Paulina, Pauline Chapel, celebrated by Cardinal Ray, who was, as sub-dean of the college, was in charge. 9.30, uh, terse. And then proceeded to votes. No, low, no result at two and black smoke at that stage. Then transfer back to the 12.30, back down to the uh, 
Santa Marta for lunch at one o'clock. Back in then at 16 hours to begin the boat at half four, which after two votes produced a result in approximately 10 to seven. That was, uh, as you can see, um, a fair, as the votes were being called out and as the majority required was being reached, there was a fair amount of excitement. So when the 77 or 78 votes were reached, there was a bula boss. <laughs> Proceeded to uh, finish the finish the count, and uh, then the first thing that's done is to call in the secretary of the conclave and a couple of other witnesses to witness the the uh, acceptance. Which of course, it's a real, real but uh, vital moment when the newly elected is called out onto the floor and asked the following question. Do you accept the election canonically made of you as Holy Father? Acceptasne electionum de catonice factum in sumum pontificum. And then when he says yes, this is asked, O nomine vis vocaris, by which name do you, by what name do you wish to be called? And of course the present Holy Father said vocabo franciscus. After that he's taken away to be Rest out in his new outfit. Come back in and then the, we proceed. The next thing is a prayer. It goes like this. Blessed Beatissimo Padre. This is addressed to the Pope. Most Holy Father, in this solemn hour in which, by uh, the ancient design of divine providence, you have been elected the chair of Peter, before being, before uh, raising up our prayers to God and increasing him, in thanking him for his election in Siemi along with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God and all the saints, it is, it is appropriate to recall the words with which our Lord Jesus Christ promised to Peter and to his successors the primacy of the apostolic ministry and of love. And then the Cardinal Turan, who was going to do the election announcement, also read this gospel which is the one from Matthew chapter 16 verses 13 19 Simon Peter do you love me more than these and then we see if then the, the first of the cardinal priests who is Karen Daniels from Belgium said let's pray O God whom the design of your wisdom has built your church on the rock of Peter head of the apostolic church protect and sustain our Pope Francis you have chosen him as successor of Peter. Grant that he may be for your people the beginning and foundation of visible foundation of the unity in the faith and of communion and charity through Christ our Lord. And then everybody proceeds out onto the no, that stage everybody goes up, he goes down, up, receives all the cardinals. But before that he himself came down to this to, to the, the end of the hall down where we were to a cardinal who was in a wheelchair there and couldn't come up. And then when that is ended, we sing the we sang the Te Deum. Just to maybe say a word about what it was like to uh, be on the loggia when the announcement was made to see the crowds of the Romans and the people present. You know, I had heard that the evening before that the piazza had been full for the first black smoke. Then we came out. This time we were going into the hall of the benediction, and of course when the lights went going on there, that was a signal to the. Even if the white smoke had not gone up, that was a signal that there was movement of something new happening. So, well, again, there's a procession with a cross, but there's four windows there. The, obviously, the centre one is reserved for the Holy Father, and there's an order there. The, the first to the cardinal deacons makes the announcement. The other two cardinal senior cardinals are there, but if cardinals came to scramble for the windows <laughs> and to look down over the well, to look down over the square and. The, Viagena Conciliazione was certainly one of the greatest sights ever in my life. And the television cameras and the banners. And of course the, uh, the two bands down playing the different anthems. And the, the one of the first things the conclave when the doors opened up was the Prince Colonna in his robes. And I inquired of an Italian garden, what was he doing there? He said he is the custodian of the conclave. He was there with his plumes and all that. So various people are introduced to the Pope before he comes out. After the cardinals, the first to be introduced is the, the secretary of the conclave, is the cardinal, uh, is the secretary of the congregation of bishops. And the tradition at that stage, the pope takes his own cardinalicial 
uh, so Keto and places on his head, which he did in this case, which is a sign that he's going to be made a cardinal, I suppose, in the next month's history. Yeah, just, just unbelievable sight to go back to your question, just to see the crowds and the, and the, the, the drama and the uniforms and all of that. And the joy, really, the joy, I think that was a big thing. And even to see how the Holy Father himself relaxed. I mean, during the day, he was obviously uh, under pressure as the voting took place. And well, he said, Jeremy, he'd been in uh, Saint Paul the Sixth. Being yes. the garden. So that's quite originally Pope, and then you're voting to make. Uh, well, on the, when, on the on the Tuesday morning, I was in the square for the smoke of Paul the Sixth, and I said I saw the white smoke going up. I said I don't expect to be in the square in the sea from the square this time, <laughs> but I hope it will come soon, and that you are all really there to see it. Yeah, and I remember the the body memory there was that one. Then of course there was this announcement, you know. Habe, uh, Annuncio Vobus Gaudium Minum Habemus Papum Excellent Eminentissimum Dominum Sancti Romani Ecclesi uh, Dominum Ioannum Baptistam and that was a sign that it was Martini and I remember a fellow throwing his hat into the air <laughs> mm -hmm. he obviously was from Milan or Brescia or up there yeah it brought back memories but the fact is that there was no such crowd like this now the moment mm -hmm. is a, a major spectacle that time I've, well the square filled up September 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock on a June day, but nothing like this, I swear, as I can remember. Maybe it was. And then you said you had you'd met the Holy Father of Pope Francis for Francis. Oh, yes. Pope for Ireland and his prayer for Ireland. And well, when, obviously, when then we were introduced, I said to him, I bring you the, the prayer and love of the Irish people, and we'll be praying for you. And he said, pray for me, pray for me. I sent my blessings to the Irish people. That was very, very genial, very affectionate, very, very caring, really. And also, uh, that was a lovely gesture too that he remembered Pope Benedict, and then he asked yes. everyone present to pray for him. That's right, and the way that he calmed the crowd there, there was a, somebody in an Italian newspaper summed him up in prayer, silence, and meekness, or mildness, and I think those are three good words. Certainly, very prayerful in it all, and great sense of awareness, like coming down to that sick cardinal, uh, calling the people to pray there in the square to go, and then asking for their prayer before he gave the benediction was very uh, uh, very touching, very moving, I must say. And then heading for the inauguration as well, too. Yeah. Mm. Well, that would be a huge event, public event on the square there. They say there could be a million people there. There's obviously, I think, pa Patriarch Bartholomew is coming from Constantinople, Vice President of the United States, the uh, German Chancellor. There's a whole... And from South America, I expect there to be a big delegation, so it's going to be quite a quite a scene. And then it begins his then he gets ahead into Holy Week. Mm -hmm. all, all the same. Although I heard he hasn't, he won't be celebrating the Mass, the Last Supper in the Latin, because he hasn't taken possession of his cathedral yet. So he did have to do that. And there's just something here, Jeremy. This is part of the conclave here, too, is it? This yeah. is the, the folder here. We might just throw this. Oh, yes, this is the kind of folder. We... Well, this is the prayer book. Uh, each one personalised. You get your own prayer book there and thing. And uh, and this folder contains the, this is the Sistine Chapel. This is the order of the rites, the prayers, and all the formulae and instructions. And this here, we have a list of the candidates. Under the law, the list, the list of the college were the voters, the electors, two cardinal bishops, Ray Bertone, then two patriarchs, Kant, Coptic, and Maronite, and the cardinal priests, cardinal deacons. And you see here, my scholar's name here, his name is Bergoglio. He sits beside, sat beside Humes, who is from Brazil, who is a great friend of his, right down to Cardinal Harvey, who was for many years worked in the Vatican as the as the prefect of the pap papal household. And your own name here, your eminence, is he there? Oh, he has to be there yes. somewhere. Which beside Kafar, Archbishop of Milan. No, Archbishop of Bologna. Givich is Archbishop of Krakow. Pope John Paul's secretary, O'Malley of Boston. Martine Sistac of uh, Br uh, Barcelona. Francois Paris, Genoa. Gracias from um, India. Dinardo is from the States. Sher is from Brazil. 
Kenya. I think uh, Mosengo is from Democratic Republic. Oh, look. They're all right there, the Taipei there from the Philippines. I think just one, maybe just to wrap up there, was the significance of the name, uh, Francis. Oh, well, that was the real surprise or the real motive of joy, the fact. Yeah, obviously, I mean, everybody thinks of Francis of Assisi and his association with poverty, obviously, is an element there. Um, go restore my, rebuild my church. Well, others were talking about Francis Xavier, the missionary, you know, so that might be in there. Though I think, speaking of the journals yesterday, he said it had, it had to be Francis of Assisi, the poor man, and also his respect for the creation and the, cre the whole ecological movement has full of significance. So it's, it's um, groundbreaking in the sense of his first Jesuit, first time Franciscus, first non-European uh, Pope since the for 13th century, I think there was some Syrian back, mm -hmm. and that's quite the first across the Atlantic, of course, the New World. That's the real, the real to the ends of the earth, as he said himself in the speech. So we, he asked. Uh, me to ask people to pray for him, which I gladly do, and I know that people watching this will keep him in in their prayers. I said to him also that uh, we haven't had a paper visit here since John Paul II in 1979, that we, when we'd find an appropriate opportunity, we would have to uh, invite him, to which he, he just listened to me. I'm sure he got so many requests and all those things that he couldn't be taken account of them all, but it certainly is a new era and a new grace. But thank, thanks, Ron Chairman. It's great okay. to hear you sharing the stories and to hear the prayerfulness also that you brought representing both Armagh and Armagh Diocese and oh, indeed yeah. pe Irish people. And uh, we thank you on this, the feast day of St. Patrick, Saint Patrick, as, Saint Patrick right. as successor of Patrick. Um, thank you. All your blessings. Thanks, thanks. Thanks. Sorry about the beginning of that there.